Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the inland Northwest. Daybreak on the banks of the Little Spokane River. It's a special place where damp from the morning dew, the foliage is lush, the air is fresh, and the water is cold but crystal clear. It is, in essence, a place where Mother Nature, at her best, is always on display. On this day, the morning's quiet solitude is briefly interrupted by the renewal of an ancient tradition. Our tradition has been passed down from generations and generations of people. Now, I'm not sure about the coastal Indians. They were, they were a canoe culture, and they used canoes. Uh, I think our tradition is more out of the North Woods canoe tradition, like the Cree Indians, but it has been handed down from generation. Now, the first white men were the French explorers that came across the North American continent. They must have, it must have been a remarkable when they first saw the first Indians canoeing, you know? I mean, this is an Indian sport. We owe it to the Indians. This is a very sacred Indian spot that we're on right now. This warm, romantic connection to the legendary voyagers of the past is just one of many reasons why canoe racers like Jim and Nick Bauer of Spokane are so passionate about their sport. It's something you can do with your kids. It's something you can do with your wife. It's something you can do with your father. It's something you can do with your brother. It's something you can do with your sister-in-law. Um, and it, for me, it, it's, it just feels good the way it glides through the water. I mean, it's a wonderful feeling. There's just moving like that. And, and I mean, every place that there's a river, there's much natural beauty. I mean, look around. I mean, so, so the natural beauty of it, and coupled with the, the, the health and fitness and the competition, it, it fills a lot of different needs. There's a lot of people that, that uh, they, they like to train and they'll race occasionally. I like to train, but most of all, I like to race. And I, I do like to, I, you know, I agree with Jim. I like the way the boat feels in the water. I like putting the paddle in the water and pulling on it. There's a harmony between the canoe and the paddlers and the water. And one of the things that makes canoeing interesting to, to me, and it's very similar to cross-country skiing, I mean, they're both one snow, the other's water, and they're in different, you know, liquid versus uh, solid conditions. Uh, and you have this wonderful glide, but, but rivers are always changing. They're always in the process of changing, so you're never quite sure what's going to happen. While it is true there are many ways to enjoy canoeing, both recreationally and competitively, the Bauer brothers' interest over the past 10 years has focused primarily on the sport of marathon canoe racing. With its roots trailing back to the Northwoods paddling cultures of both the United States and Canada, Modern marathon canoe racing blends together two distinct disciplines, paddling and running. To qualify as a marathon canoe race, participants must paddle and portage their canoes over a course no shorter than 15 miles long. One such marathon canoe race is held annually in Spokane. Known as the U.S. West Canoe Classic, the 43-mile race from the city beach in Coeur d'Alene to Riverfront Park in Spokane is rapidly being recognized as one of the premier pro canoe races in the nation. What makes the U.S. West Canoe Classic different or outstanding in the field of, uh, of marathon racing, basically, is the fact that um, this is the only river that marathon canoe racing is held on that has the drop uh, feet per mile in it, and consequently, it ranks probably as the toughest of all the canoe races, both in the United States and in Canada and it ranks right up at the top we've had in the three races that pro racers have been here and we've had the top international pro racers attend the race. And also it's, as Mike Fries out of New York, who's a pro racer, said, it's the outer limits of marathon canoe racing. Considered among the best marathon canoe racers in the country, the Bauer brothers know exactly what it takes to win a marathon canoe race like the one in Spokane. 
um, 83 when I won the national championships. I, I paddled about 450 hours that season. I probably ran another 120 hours. You know, I, I, I trained maybe 750 hours that year. So I lifted weights and, and we ski in the winter. I mean, there is no off season. In a sense, that's the secret. And I mean, um, we've been doing that for 10 years or over 10 years. The top paddlers are as good athletes as you'll find anywhere. Serge Corbin, I mean, He's as fit as Greg LeMond, if, if, if not fitter. I mean, these guys are tremendous athletes. Besides being a physically demanding sport, marathon canoe racing also requires close attention to proper technique, something the Bowers concentrate on when practicing for a race. One big thing we work on a lot is uh, timing. Notice how Nick's in perfect timing with my stroke. So we paddle at the same time. So it's real important for a canoe team to work in unison. Each person's just part of the team, and you try and stay together. You can see the water's kind of rough today. It's hard to stay smooth when it's this rough. But it's something always to think about. We also think about driving down with both arms. Notice the top hand and the lower arm pushing down in the water. That's called a good catch. Along with honing their paddling skills, the Bowers also spend practice time on their portaging technique. When we come into a portage, as we're paddling into the shore, the man in the stern of the boat always waits till the bow paddler gets out. When the bow paddler gets out, the, the weight, the boat's weighted unequally, so the front comes up. Well, as the bow paddler gets out, the front automatically comes up. He grabs the boat, and then the stern paddler jumps out, and you throw it up on your shoulder in harmony. And you even when you're running, you try and stay in sync. The guy in the back of the boat tries to stay in sync so the boat's not bouncing, that you bounce together with the boat and just kind of float over the ground. Although having raced competitively now for over a decade, it's obvious the Bowers' competitive fire still burns strong. Yet, at the same time, both are quick to point out that canoeing means more than just winning a race. For Nick, the value of the sport lies in the fact it will add 15 to 20 years to his life. While for Jim, it's even more basic. One of the beauties is, is, is the tradition lives on. I'm, I'm 45. Sometimes it feels like going on 65. Um, I still have, you know, I, I can race masters. I have some competitive years, but it's a special thrill to, to me to watch my brother. I, he's still a threat nationally, and my son. I mean, he, you know, it's the protege-mentor relationship. I'm gonna get to watch a whole new generation start, and this will continue. Maybe his son will paddle, or he'll pass the, 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 the message on to someone else. My daughter's paddling, so, you know, it's, it's a new generation. So there's, there's going to be another Brad somewhere. You know, there's kids all over that are doing that, and it's neat. If you have a topic for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS-TV. South 3911 Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS-TV.